I'm Doug Schryon. I'm the Executive Director of Workforce Solutions East Texas. We're here today because the Texas Legislature in House Bill Number 5 has decided, and rightly, that you're mature enough, intelligent enough, and you're ready to start working on your career. Your career begins, in some cases, as few as five years from now. Graduation is just around the corner. House Bill 5 is asking us to look at four different endorsement areas as you enter high school. The first, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. The second, in public service careers. The third, business and industry careers. And the fourth, arts and humanities. All are important, but each one will take you in a slightly different direction. We're here to help you explore each one of them and make sure that we can get you on the track you want to be on so that you can help us build a better and stronger East Texas. Under our STEM initiative, we reached out to one of our partners here in the 14 counties, UT Health East Texas, for an exploration of careers within STEM. My name is Chrissy Chastain. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer for UT Health Henderson in Carthage. If you have an interest in becoming a nurse in a facility, some of the first steps that you can take as a student is participating in a health science program that's offered in most of the high schools. With that opportunity, you get to see all the different nursing areas, OB, med surge, labor and delivery, as well as emergency nursing. In that interest, you can also get qualified to be a CNA prior to graduation, which opens up the door and gets your foot one step closer to the outcome of what you want to be a nurse. Um, once you go to school, um, basic med surge training is usually um, recommended for at least a year just to get a better understanding of what nursing is about. And then in that situation, you can promote yourself to a more critical care area, which could include emergency nursing in order to get your advanced stage nursing degree. My name is Carrie Weatherford. I'm the infection control and prevention nurse for UT Health Henderson in Carthage. Concerning educational backgrounds or skill sets or, or pre-learning for this particular position or for healthcare in general, it can be varied. Um, sometimes college is required. Sometimes additional classes beyond high school are required. Um, they may be short term, three months or so. They could be numerous years, depending on what particular aspect of healthcare you want to go in. Um, for me, specifically in nursing, um, I have a bachelor's degree. I spent four years in college, post high school. And um, regarding skill sets, uh, experience goes a long way. Um, you gain experience through work, through in your career, whatever you choose to pursue um, in healthcare, whether that's working in the laboratory or radiology or dietary or housekeeping or nursing or whatever your field is. But uh, there's a lot of science involved. If you, if you like science, um, if you have a passion for that or math, those kind of uh, areas of focus, then this could be for you. Um, knowing that it's, it's going to be very tough at times, it can be emotionally taxing, it can be physically taxing, um, but the rewards are great. Um, many times the rewards aren't something you can hold in your hand, it's not something that you, you build or you create, but the feelings and the memories that you may leave with others could be lifelong. The, I think a passion is needed to be able to be successful in any kind of a healthcare setting. Um, like I say, whether it's, whether it's housekeeping, whether it's dietary, whether it's lab, radiology, all those departments are here to benefit um, the patient and to provide safe patient care in the best way that we can. So regardless of, of what area you may be interested in, um, knowing that all of those departments work together in unison as a team to benefit patients, I think would be uh, the, the most, the best knowledge to be able to uh, use to decide if this is for you. Also too, I would say that if you have uh, someone that you have knowledge of that works in a healthcare setting, um, family member or friend or what have you, I would say if they allow opportunities for shadowing to take advantage of that, to go and see what they do and see how um, patients are, what kind of care is provided for them there, see if it's a setting that you might be interested in, and try multiple ones. Don't just focus on one. If it's something you're not sure about at this point, um, try several things on and, and see what, what goes your direction.
I'm Tony Dorsey. I'm a registered nurse. I was called to the healthcare field when I was very young, 16 actually, and I started as a phlebotomist in the lab here at this hospital uh, through the work program. Some related fields in healthcare that you could look into and not necessarily be in acute care um, would be like medical coding for billing purposes. Um, you could do site counseling, um, therapy, there's uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, and then there's also dietitians where you focus on nutrition. In acute care, you have a laboratory technician, phlebotomist, uh, respiratory therapist, surgical technologist, you have um, radiology techs, uh, and of course nurses, and that's LVNs, RNs, nurse practitioners, um, and certified nurse aides. Healthcare can be very rewarding in that you're getting to touch people's lives. A lot of patients come in without family members present and we're the only people and faces that they get to see. If you um, want to be doing something for a very long time that will provide benefit and reward for numerous people throughout your career, um, working in healthcare in general, regardless of what aspect of it, could be something that would be tremendously rewarding to you in your time. Uh, you just, you have a passion for people and you have the opportunity to really touch lives and um, provide services and, and care for people in their most vulnerable times. I mean, even just coming to the hospital to get labs drawn, that's scary for a lot of people. So, you know, you're caring nature and the way that you, you take care of people in the moment, that's, it's always rewarding. When we were looking at business and industry, we were excited to partner with Howe's Air Conditioning and Electrical. I'm Bruce Whitaker. I'm a owner manager of Howe's Air Conditioning and Electrical in Carthage, Texas. We do residential and light commercial air conditioning and electrical work. A typical work day for us in the air conditioning industry, uh, normally we start anywhere from seven to eight in the morning. And just depending on the season, we may be off at four in the afternoon, or we may work till seven or eight o'clock at night during our really busy season, uh, where there is a lot of people that their air conditioners are broke and we just can't hardly leave them without. Some of the good things about a career in the air conditioning industry is there will always be a demand for people being cool in their house or their place of business. That's not going away. That will always be here and the repairs and the installation of these systems can't be replaced by some robot. Um, some other good things is if you like to serve people and you like to see people happy, this is one of those industries that you can be in because they're happy when you get their system back going. A lot of the training that we're doing today is hands-on. Uh, I do, in my company, I send some people to some six-week classes um, to help speed them along but it is not a college setting. Uh, it is similar to working on what's behind me here in a lab uh, type atmosphere. So a couple steps that you could do to prepare to be in this field would, would be to reach out to a company that does this type of work. Um, see if they have an internship that, that you could be a part of and just work on it in, uh, maybe a summer to see if it fits you. You really need to be a mechanical minded person. Um, you have to enjoy uh, visiting with people, uh, interacting with people because you do that in our field. So practicing communication with people is one thing that you could do. Uh, you don't always have to be an air conditioning mechanic or an air conditioning technician. You don't always have to be on the repair side or the install side. Um, 
as people work their way up through this industry, uh, there are sales opportunities as well. If the physical work is not for you, there are opportunities in sales of air conditioning. You may not even think about it, but as you walk through the grocery stores and know that meat's cold in a cooler or you have frozen foods, there is usually somewhere behind the scenes a room in this place that it's just full of all kinds of refrigeration equipment that keep all that stuff cool. That's another avenue is the commercial refrigeration. Uh, or how about ice machines at your restaurants, ice cream machines in restaurants. All that stuff is, is HVAC related. It's not cooling a space, but it is cooling some type of commodity. Um, and that, that's something a lot of people don't stop to think about. Of what does it take to keep that meat cool or cold or frozen in a grocery store? Uh, their storage facilities, they'd be huge walk-in coolers or freezers. They may be as big as this shop we're standing in. Uh, another thing is if you wanted to be an engineer, there's a lot of engineering opportunities in air conditioning. They call it mechanical engineering, uh, where you specialize in the design of air conditioning systems or pieces of equipment that are used in the air conditioning industry. Um, we actually use this as a trainer for our young guys that are helpers intern during an internship. Um, we'll break this unit and let them fix it. We're always going to want our houses warm in the winter, cool in the summer, and it takes air conditioning to do that. So if you wanted to be in the air conditioning industry and, and work on air conditioners, install air conditioners, you don't have to go to college. Um, Probably the biggest thing to start with would be to reach out to a company that does this type of work and see if they offer you some type of internship where you can work with them some during the summer. Uh, start out and just see if you like it. Most companies uh, today are very willing to train people if they want to get into this industry. Uh, just so that we can continue to have technicians in this industry and the people to work and do, do the air conditioning repairs and installs. Yes, absolutely, we offer internship here with the air conditioning side. You ride with a technician for some time once you've been through our probationary period and you get along with everybody and we can kind of see that you're able to deal with people, then most of the time, we're going to offer you that position to advance and put you into a more advanced internship. Internship here is usually less than a year, and we're going to let you get out there and start doing your thing. We're always right there, a phone call away behind you, supporting you. And that tall young man that just left here, he was in college, uh, went through a semester of college, and decided he did not like it. He's in the top of his graduating class. And he went to college and didn't like it. And so he ended up coming to work here after he had been through um, kind of a 90-day probationary period and he showed a lot of interest. We have set him up that he's fixing to go through a six week training that we will pay for. We're scholarshiping that to him. We're paying him while he goes to school and we're paying for his school. Uh, just so that we can have technicians that we're comfortable in. It is a great industry to be in because it's not going to go away. Uh, you, you will always have the need for someone that can go out and physically look at, 
diagnose and repair an air conditioning system um, that can't be replaced by some type of non-human technology. Another good thing about this industry is it never gets stale. It's always evolving with new equipment, new ideas, new things to do. Uh, it's also um, a career to where you can make a really good living if you're really, uh, willing to put in the work and the time. Uh, you can make a really good living and support a family with no problems. If you're interested in looking at arts and humanities, we're lucky to have with us Texas Country Music Hall of Fame. The Texas Country Music Hall of Fame was actually started in 1997 at another location, a much smaller location. We were very successful with that and the city of Carthage bought into that knowing that it was going to be a really big thing for our town because there's still so much interest in the country music profession in Texas. A typical day at the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame, we are meeting guests from all over the United States and telling them about the history of country music in Texas. I was raised here, and uh, being a relative of Tex Ritter, I always wanted to do something to honor him where he was born. And I had the opportunity with the city to create the Tex Ritter Museum in a, a house next door. And then uh, we decided that we wanted to honor other Texans who were country music stars that were friends of Tex Ritter's. So we created the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame. We're all about honoring Texans who were, uh, who contributed significantly to the Texas country music profession. I, if I were starting out today and I really thought I was interested in museums or uh, promoting my town or something like that, I would go to the Chamber of Commerce in the town and I would say, you know, can I volunteer to help uh, with your events, with your, you know, get your foot in the door and learn by doing and, and or a museum. If you have a museum in your town, go to the museum. Uh, there are uh, apprenticeships available. Uh, I, I think some of the college have apprenticeships available and, and just, you know, pursue that and uh, get your feet wet. Get, learn, learn the people that do it and they'll call on you. There's one career that is really an important career uh, for museums and that's graphic artists. Uh, and that you can learn, you know, if you're interested in art in any way or uh, designing uh, brochures, designing uh, promotion photos and that kind of thing, that's a real big part of the uh, industry. Another big part of this industry is marketing. And that's if you wanted to manage somebody that was in the business and teach them how to get the word out that they're uh, won't you know and not only just not only marketing them with with the uh, social media and that kind of thing but booking them you know there's also producers that go out and pr produce the the different uh, concerts and that kind of thing there's just all kinds of, of things that you can go into if you're interested in the arts if you're uh, interested in a certain aspect of history, like say the history of country music, the history of uh, something is, is something even like uh, the history of the uh, suits that the country music artists wore. If you find yourself interested in something like that, then you can get your counselor to steer you in the right places. I know the University of Houston has a lot of courses. I know they have a hospitality school. Uh, the hospitality industry is really big in Texas. I, I will just say that uh, if you want a fun job, uh, this has been a remarkable opportunity for me personally, and I have met so many wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, 
you know, if you're a people person, if you're uh, interested in um, helping people, if you're interested in promoting people, promoting your town, promoting uh, yourself even, uh, this is what you need to be doing. Well, and another thing that we encourage a lot here uh, is uh, uh, voice. We have, we have the uh, John Ritter Tribute Showcase every year, and uh, kids audition for that showcase, and uh, the winner gets to represent the Hall of Fame at different concerts all over Texas the next year. And our girl that just won this past year, her name is Bailey Ray, and she is currently trying out on The Voice, and she's already in the battle rounds. So we're so excited. We're really pulling for Bailey Ray. She's the second uh, winner of our contest that we have had in The Voice, and the other one got in the top six, and her name was Holly Tucker. And uh, we are so excited about that. Uh, the John Ritter Tribute Showcase was created to help young people get started in the music business. And uh, we have our own voice teacher, we have our own stage presence teacher, and it really gives these kids a place to perform and to develop their talent in a good atmosphere, a good uh, home atmosphere. Uh, that's what we're all about here. We want to we want to teach the next generation how to do this. If you have something that you're passionate about, you know something that you think that other people should know about. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, I think it, it's it's a full time job. It, it's you've got to be ready to do things that on the spur of the moment. You've got to be uh, you've got to be a people person. You've got to be energetic. You've got to be uh, on all the time. You've got to uh, be on your you know on the best best of you all the time. So, uh, you know, if you think you can uh, do that, well, then this is what you need to do. If you like people, if you love doing things for people, if you love showing off your town, then you need to get into uh, marketing your town and, and into uh, the arts, all the arts. They're all, you know, if you're creative, that's perfect for you. If you find yourself creating things for Christmas and, and uh, helping. I mean, there's, there's even, we have a wonderful theater group here and we have volunteers who come in and, and build the sets. You know, it's all, it's all a part of the program. There's just so many different areas that you can go into. Art is very, very important to our communities, uh, especially to our smaller communities because um, it brings our citizens together that have like interests. Uh, it provides uh, places for our people to go, productions for them to see, uh, exhibits for them to see, those kinds of things. And it just, it, the people that love art and that are talented uh, in every aspect of art uh, clean seem to cling together and it brings our community together and and I think it's just absolutely a necessary thing to have. I mean I think I really think and, and I can only speak for Carthage, Texas. We have a theater group, we have a, a bands that play downtown, we have uh, our museums uh, and the college does productions, uh, they have an orchestra, you know, our churches come together and do productions and that kind of thing. And it just makes our town alive. It really does. It just uh, gives you somewhere to go just about every night. Uh, and it brings you together with friends you love. And I, you know, it's just a very important part of our world. In our public service endorsement, we reached out to Russ County Sheriff's Office and talked to Deputy Patrick Dooley about careers in public service. My name is uh, Deputy Patrick Dooley. I am a deputy with the Russ County Sheriff's Office. I uh, 
hold many different hats with the sheriff's office. I'm a medic in the jail, uh, meaning I have my, my EMS certification. I'm a, the animal control officer for the county, so I take care of uh, most animal complaints and calls. Um, I hold just a lot of different hats here. As a law enforcement officer, as a peace officer, my goal is to help somebody. Um, and that's anybody that works in this department, I can tell you that's going to be their same exact goal. Um, we are supposed to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Meaning that you call me because you're upset and sad, and then we have to come out there and we talk to you, try to help you out. Uh, if somebody's beating you up, we come out there to help you. Um, and I know it sounds funny, uh, I get a lot of calls for animals stuck, and we have to go out there and I help get these animals unstuck. Um, uh, little Susie's cat or little, little Timmy's dog, you know, get them out of wells. And um, we have a lot of water wells that are, that are abandoned around here. But uh, law enforcement jobs ultimately is to serve and protect um, and, and to help, help people, not, not to hurt people. So if you're interested in a career uh, in, in public safety, whether it be fire, police, and um, law enforcement, EMS, uh, to start with school-wise, uh, foreign languages. Spanish. Spanish is a very big one. Uh, bilingual uh, students or bilingual um, uh, people that apply have a very good chance of getting on just because they're bilingual. Uh, math. Math is a very big one uh, when it comes to the fire service. The first area we went to was the jail, okay, and the, the room that we initially went into was the picket. The picket is a control area, the brain center for the jail. Uh, the picket officer takes care of make sure that she can she can see or whoever the officer he or she make sure they can watch uh, all the inmates uh, she is the keeper of the locks she's she's the uh, make sure that she lets uh, people access in and out of certain areas if they're not supposed to be in those areas she won't let them in um, but she is the she's the brain she's the control hub for everything that we do in the jail so the different artworks are different uh, inmates that we've had in jail um, we have what are called work, working trustees or working inmates, trustee inmates. Uh, these are inmates that have, uh, have misdemeanor charges, you know, child support. Uh, uh, we're tattoo artists and stuff like that when they were able to draw and make those mu murals and, and pictures that were up on the wall that you saw. So the intake area is where everybody that comes in the back door that has been placed in custody or under arrest comes in and they are processed in, meaning we get all their, their information, name, date of birth, pretty much everything we know about them, their address. Um, we do a medical screening on them, we do a mental health screening on them. Um, and at that point, we also do their fingerprints, their mug shots, and then we also do, um, uh, we get their, whatever their charges are, and we, we, we hold them at that point, depending on, on, on what kind of charges they have and if they've, placed, if they've posted a bond or no bond. So in the armory, the first large, the, the larger weapon that I pulled out was a uh, 40, mil 40 millimeter launcher. Um, the good thing about that is, is we can launch uh, different projectiles in, whether it be a marking projectile, whether it be a gas projectile, flashbang, um, something to that effect that, that helps us to try to, to in, a, in a hostile situation, we can try to kind of slow that situation down to where we have more control over it until we can get the bad guys put into custody. Um, we have different other different weapons. We have different style rifles. Uh, the M14s you saw will be used as a, as a long range. Or a, we don't have snipers, we have counter snipers, or sharpshooters um, is uh, what that one would be. We have the um, uh, M16s in there that the, came off the uh, 1033 program. Uh, those will be used for, um, in case we get into a full blown gunfight because I mean, this is Texas, everybody has guns. Whether it's legal or not, they have guns. Some guns are bigger than what we, what we carry on a, on a daily basis. And so we have to have those out there with us. Uh, the, the, uh, orange, the orange shotguns were our less lethal shotguns. Uh, the shoot bean bags, um, we've used them in the past. They've come in very handy to help subdue a, sub, sub, subdue a suspect to where um, uh, he was only kind of, he, he had minor injuries just due to the impact of the bean bag. The, um, other equipment we have in there, we have different types of, of uh, shotguns that are issued to the deputies they carry around with them. Um, we normally carry our sidearm, then we have our shotgun and our rifle in our vehicle. And the way we're taught is your pistol gets you back to your big gun if you get into a gunfight. And that's, that's what your pistol's for, is to get you back to your vehicle to, to get out your long gun um, as needed. Uh, we have flashbangs in there, uh, distraction devices. 
Uh, most, like I said, most kids will know what those are if they've played any of these these shooting games, Call of Duty, so forth and so on like that. Um, we have tasers. We have our JPXs, which is a a uh, pepper uh, pepper spray slash pepper ball style uh, gun that we that we carry on us. Um, we have the, our our RAM tools. We have our our breaching tools. You saw the saw the RAM. Uh, which was a big long uh, cylinder with the two handles on it, and then we had the the Halligan tool, which is a prying tool that we use to to get into doors or get into to places that we we need to get into, and someone doesn't want to let us in. Now we don't always use them for that. Um, sometimes we have to use them. Um, I've used them in the past to actually help somebody get out of a car wreck. The car was on fire and was able to use the Halligan tool to breach the door until the fire department got there. A lot of times we can be first on scene before the fire department EMS gets there. Anything that you can do as far as going into uh, typing, uh, computer classes, everything in this day and age is computer based. Uh, no matter which side of the house you're on, whether it's law enforcement, fire, EMS, you have reports to do. Makes you, it, it makes it a lot easier if you can type at a, at a steady pace other than uh, not being able to type. Uh, all of your basic classes that you have to have to be able to get out of high school you need to need to be able to. You have to graduate because without a without a high school diploma, uh, majority of the uh, the academies that you go to, you're not going to be able to apply for because you don't have that that behind you that diploma behind you. Um, all of the the the, the three major uh, public safety uh, entities, uh, fire, EMS, and law enforcement, all have a separate academy you have to go through uh, that you have to pass to be able to to become either a fireman or a, a firefighter or a police officer or a or an EMT and and you need to have all that behind you um, it makes it a lot easier when you're when you're going through if you're if you if you know how to study now in school when you go through those academies it's going to make it so much easier on you to be able to study in those in those classes in those schools as well as well in in the in the role of, of uh, public safety as a whole there's a lot of different ways to go so you've got your, your, your police officers, sheriff's deputies, you've got your firefighters, you've got your EMTs, paramedics. Uh, some people need to look at uh, the big push right now is emergency management as, as a public safety. Emergency management is, is the group that, that mitigates or, or prepares for disasters before they happen for your community. To be a fire marshal, you have to be firefighter and you have to be a commissioned firefighter and a commissioned peace officer in the state of Texas. To be a commission peace, uh, to be a commission firefighter, say Texas, you have to have your EMS, whether it be an EMT, uh, EMT advanced or an EMT paramedic, one of those certifications, uh, to be able to fall into that. Um, uh, animal control, that's another big one. Cities now have have animal control uh, officers out there, and they have a whole separate school they have to go to for that. This is a job. Any any of these jobs are going to be a lifelong position. You will always need law enforcement. You will always need firefighters, and you're always going to need EMTs. I love my job and everything that I've done, and I've and and all the years that I've been in it. Um, I see people on their worst day. My job is to make them have a better day, no matter whether it's whether it's being in law enforcement or fire or EMS, and and I wouldn't trade what I do for anything. Our ambulances are staffed by two people. You have typically have an EMT and at minimum you have one paramedic. Most of the time we're up front, we have state-of-the-art technology that get us where we go, uh, have our dispatchers able to tell us through radio, also through iPads, they give us all of our information, have our mapping, everything like that. But once we get a patient in the back, uh, the best way to describe it is an a ER, a ER room on wheels. Uh, we can do everything for the most part uh, that an ER can do minus down to surgery. I mean, we can't really do any surgical intervention, but uh, life-saving intervention is what we do in the back. Um, basically everything in that blue bag you see there is uh, all of our AHA, ACLS drugs, PALS drugs. Uh, there is trauma supplies airway interventions that we have in there we're able to do through that blue bag uh, and then we have our monitor here which allows us to look at uh, EKG rhythms uh, blood pressures uh, and ETCO2 different monitoring devices that allow us to see what the patient's doing uh, at any given moment and then you're just stat or have equipment to 
basically keep a patient alive. Uh, and that's what our goal is. Uh, our goal is get a patient who is alive and breathing to a doctor so they can ultimately intervene with more advanced skills. Uh, I'm Lance Ellis. I'm a captain here at Henderson Fire Department on B-Ship. Uh, there's six of us that are on duty. Um, we all have got college credit hours for going through the fire academy. Um, some of us are paramedics, others are EMTs here. So we run not just fire calls, we run EMS calls with uh, the ambulance. Uh, we run two engines and a ladder truck. And we have two stations. Um, eight to five, it's business. We do fire inspections. Uh, we take care of maintain our hydrants here in the city. Um, and then we maintain all the trucks and stuff like that. And then after five, it's kind of like being at the house. We all have chores to do, so we take care of, you know, the cleaning and everything in the afternoons at, you know, living room and our bedrooms and all that kind of good stuff. And we all cook and, and stuff and go to the grocery store together. Um, so when we come in in the mornings, uh, I take a uh, pass down from the shift that gets off, um, whether that's we need to maintain trucks, that type of stuff, or calls that they've run, that, that, that type of stuff. We have to check all our trucks. We have to check every piece of equipment on here from the jaws to the medical equipment that we run here on the engine. And then um, basically uh, we may have to go out and do fire inspections. Um, we have CEs and when I mean CEs is uh, the guys have got to do so many hours still on the computer or in classroom work to keep up their certifications. So even though you graduate and you come to a fire department, you still have to keep up your education as, you're, as you work here. So the guys may be doing some type of learning in there or we're doing PR events. We're big here in the city doing PR so, um, and run calls. So we stay pretty busy from eight to five. And then after that, after five o'clock, whether it's run calls, it's kind of the guy's time or girl's time and they get to relax and hang out and uh, study if they need to study or whatever. So, main thing is with this job and kind of like military, you're going to be testing. Uh, pretty much I've tested through my whole career. Uh, and what I mean by that, you can do, when you take a civil service exam at different departments, it could be basic reading, math, uh, writing, that type of stuff. And then um, you got to stay physical fit. We have to work out, uh, the state requires us to work out an hour a day. Um, we've all been to college. Uh, we've got some college credit hours. That's where you'll go to the fire academy. Some of us went to Kilgore, some went to A&M. Uh, and then you'll have to get an EMS certification. And when I said that earlier, some are EMTs and medics. Uh, me being a paramedic, I went to school for a year and a half besides the fire academy to get my paramedic. And that just means that my skills are a little bit more advanced than a basic EMT basic. Um, I did see at the high school, I think they teach EMT basic school there now. I think I saw a classroom that, where they do that at the high school here. Um, so that'd be something they'd probably like, would get out of the way if it was me. If they would offer that back in the day, I would have got it out of the way. A lot of us got in it, I enjoy helping people. So um, when we run calls and I can, we see people on bad days, that type of stuff, at least I'm helping them to at least get through what they're getting through at the time. And so if you enjoy helping people and enjoy being out uh, around people, then this will be a good job. You know, I get that, you know, satisfaction out of helping people. So that would be something they would, you know, would get out of it. And um, yeah, it's, it's something new every day. So. <laughs> so if you're wanting to, at this age, if you're wanting to learn more about this, check with your local area volunteer fire departments. Check with your local police departments about Explorer programs. Um, a lot of those different agencies will have a junior firefighter program or an Explorer program where the kids can get into it and they can get an idea of how it works. And they kind of learn a little bit more and by the time you, you, know, you get ready to graduate high school or however long it is, you have a very good, strong understanding of how the fire service works or how, um, how law enforcement works. Um, EMS wise, EMS and fire will fall in together because you will learn medical first aid in, fire, in the fire service. But yes, you can. The junior firefighters and, and explore programs for, for the law enforcement side. Just make sure you educate yourself on them before you jump into it. And, you know, at, at, at eighth grade, you know, you've got a lot of choices and you still got a lot of time to figure out what you want to do.
Just make sure it's exactly what you want to do before you jump in feet first. Thanks for joining us at a virtual Dream Expo. We're here because you have dreams. The reason we exist is to help those dreams become a little closer to reality. I hope today you've gotten a lot of information. I hope it's been useful. And please reach out to us if there's anything we can do to further take a look at careers you might be interested in. Thanks for being with us.